guys, it's Charmise Eaters here, and today I'm actually doing a requested video from Kelsey over on my Patreon about how to convert recipes that you find online or make your own recipes using a soap calculator. So I am on soapcalc.net, and I'm going to go to a recipe calculator. And yes, this can look daunting at first, but it's actually very easy um, once you get used to it. So first, we're going to start off with type of lye, and NaOH is sodium hydroxide, which is used for bar soap making, and then you also have KOH, which is potassium hydroxide, and I use that when I'm doing liquid soaps. So we're going to go with sodium hydroxide, and if you ever get stuck and forget, you can actually click on these numbers, and it'll give you some help on what is what. So let's close that out. All right, next we're going to go with the weight of oils, and I never do pounds just because it's such a big measurement. I typically do ounces, and a lot of people do grams um, because it's really the best measurement when trying to be precise, but I go with ounces just because that's what I'm used to. And we're going to be changing this number up a little bit later, but let's go over the rest first. So next we're going to go over to water, and it's already clicked on water as percent of oils, and this is a great starter number, 38. Um, but I, over time, I did go down to 33 because I was having an issue with soda ash at the top of my soap and then also glycerin rivers, which I'll put a picture of here in my um, charcoal soap. So I went down to 33 so that it was less water in my soap. And then I actually over time started to do lye concentration as 33%. And since we're doing one of my recipes today, I'm just going to keep that on 33%. All right, so the fourth little section over here starts with super fat. I keep my super fat at 5%, which means that is the amount of oils that do not turn into soap. And it really acts as a buffer for me if I accidentally add too much lye. Um, it's just a little bit of breathing room because you don't want to have too much lye in your soap. Next is fragrance, and it's already on 0.5 ounces per pound, which... I find perfectly fine. Um, I don't like my soap too heavily scented, so I keep it at 0.5. Um, if I'm doing essential oils, I might actually go down to 0.4. Um, it just depends on the essential oil. All right, over here at five, we have the soap quality. So the first part is the soap qualities, hardness, cleansing, condition, bubbly, creamy iodine, and INS. And when you click on a butter or an oil, you'll actually see it change because that's the quality of that oil or butter. And then down here, you have the fatty acids. But if you need more information about any one of those, you can actually click on the I, and it'll take you to a Wikipedia page with more info. And we're going to discuss this more on the next page. All right, so now you have all of your oils, fats, and waxes. So you can scroll through here and see a lot of different types of things. Goose fat japan wax just all types of things but we're going to use the recipe that i use most often on my youtube so first off we start with olive oil and it is not olive oil pumice it's just regular olive oil and the next is coconut oil and it is 76 degree this is just a typical one you buy in the store i only use the 92 degree if i'm doing the lip balm so you can double click on those and you can also add them here or you can add it here. And if you need to remove one, you can remove it by clicking that. Next is cocoa butter and then castor oil. And if you're given a recipe with the ounces instead of the percent, you can actually just click over here and type in the ounces. But mine is in percent. So the first one is 65, 25, 5, and 5. All right, so this is when I'm going to go back over here and change this number. This number changes for me depending on the mold that I'm using. So if I'm using my big 10-pound mold, this will actually be 116. So let's go over here and calculate the recipe. And then you'll see all of this is added in here and your fragrance as well. And then I'm going to do multiple tabs, view or print recipe. All right, so this is the soap weight for that big 10 pound mold that I use. Um, let's go back. I'm going to describe all this in a second, but let's go back because I know a lot of people use a 42 ounce mold when they're starting out. So I would for that mold, I would use 28.5 ounces. And really, that was just me coming back and guessing. So like if I put 29 here, let's just put 29 
and then calculate. I'm sure there's probably an easier way to do this, but this is how I do it. And then I'm going to view or print recipe. And then I go here and I see it's 42.20. So I don't want it to overflow in that mold. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to do 28.5. Calculate, view or print recipe. And then you see here it's at 41.47, which is great for that 42 ounce mold. So I always start with the recipe name. I'm just going to say detox soap. All right, so you see all of this information here, total oil weight, which is what we put in already for that 42 ounce water as percent of oils. And remember that we changed that one to lye concentration. So we focused on that 33% instead of just having this number as 38% for beginners. Your super fat, your water lye ratio. Here you have the saturated to unsaturated ratio. And this one, I typically do not want to go over 50 because that is my harder oils and butters or waxes, whatever. Um, and I'm not able to swirl or do my designs when this is over 50. Iodine, INS, fragrance ratio. And then this is the amount of fragrance that I would weigh out for this one. And when I do print this out, I highlight all of these here just so I know which ones I'm looking at because you have all of this information. And of course, if you want to switch over to grams, you can do that as well because it's right here. And then you have the ounces of each one of your butters and oils. And then this is where you can see the soap bar quality much better than on the last page because you see the ranges that they say that you should be in. And you see each one is within range. And as you get more experience and add different butters, waxes, all that type of stuff, then you'll see these numbers change. If you want it more bubbly, like in this one, I would probably add more castor oil so that it's more bubbly. And really it's all about preference when it comes to this over here for me. Um, as long as I stay in the range, the recommended range, I feel good about my soap. And down here you have the additives. So this is my detox soap. So for the first thing I add is the sodium lactate, and that is one teaspoon per pound of oils. And this is 1.7 pound of oils. So I'm probably just gonna add one point five. And then next, I add one tablespoon of cowl and clay, so forth and so on. I would add the fragrance um, that I choose, which would be like tea tree oil for this one. And then for notes, I would say how long I let it sit before I took it out the mold or what temperature that I made the soap at, what went wrong, went, what went well. Some of it's typed out, most of it's handwritten after the fact. And then I would print my soap recipe and put it in a binder for later use. Or I would save it as a PDF and upload it on my Patreon for you guys. So I sincerely hope this video helps some of you guys out there that are just starting out or people have never used SoapCalc.net before. There are other soap calculators, but this is definitely my favorite one. And a huge shout out to the people on Patreon that are helping me sponsor these videos.